I started this whole drawing project outside today. We had a, a nice clear day to start. And uh, oh, it was rather cool. Almost bordered on cold. I think we got down to minus four degrees Celsius last night. Uh, but in the sun, it was uh, pretty warm, standing out there working. Then the sun kind of swung around to the back side of the building and it got cold, it got windy. So I'm moving inside now. It's just a little cramped in the shop right now, tripping over lumber on the floor. Got the other boat on the way over here. So I'm going to be tracing pattern number six right now. I've done one, eight, and seven so far. I don't believe I'm even going to have enough uh, plywood here to trace out these patterns. So I will need to go and pick up another sheet. Although these are a lot easier to trace than round patterns because you can just set the ruler down on the line and draw. And it's going to be much more accurate than sort of hand drawing around a curve. I always want to take a second look to just make sure that uh, any lines that are necessary I haven't forgotten prior to lifting all the sheet up. Marking off where plank lands are, got the notch for uh, keel and keelson apron. Should I be marking in on these patterns where floorboard should come? I suppose it might be helpful. I now have the patterns drawn out for the eight station molds or the half patterns on uh, cheap uh, one inch ply, door skin. And I'm going to cut these out and then I will use these to trace both halves of the pattern onto my 5 eighths ply. So we're going to get to cutting these out quickly on the bandsaw. Well the bandsaw is a little use, these pieces are just too big to go through the bandsaw. So I'm going to cut, I'm cutting them out with my jigsaw, fine tooth blade, as close to the line as possible, and then I will just clean up with a block plane and match them to the patterns on the plans. I can just use my block plane to clean up these edges, which fortunately they are straight edges. So uh, just going to plane down to the line. Can take it over to the plans and check out how close I am. What I'm looking for, mostly what I'm looking for is the lines on this edge here, the planking edge, which I can get to line up beautifully. And then if my center lines don't line up, I can mark there and there. And from that point through to that point. Draw a line and clean up this straight edge. For the most part, this is due to the fact of me not getting that center line dead on center on the center lines marked on the patterns or on the plans. But this side, this edge here is perfect, so now I just need to clean this down to get to the proper center line. Clean up 
clean up the baseline. of the plywood, of course, is I can use the factory edge for the baseline. patterns drawn on my 5 8 ply. It's time to cut them out and uh, I'm not sure whether I will do it accurately with a jigsaw or hack them out with a jigsaw and then take them to my bandsaw and trim them up. I think I'll probably just cut them up into rough pieces and take it to the bandsaw which I think will be a little bit easier other than the big edges which I will have difficulty getting to. cut out it's time to set this boat up now I have been actually withholding putting this uh, structure together part of the reason is is that it took about three and a half weeks for my order of four sheets of plywood to come in uh, I guess they're just uh, moving off the shelf quickly and I just had no could not see why I would set this all up if I didn't have the plywood here because it's just gonna sit in the way uh, you know, restricting my use of the shop, the table saw whatsoever. So, I'm going to do a little differently than I did on the uh, little acorn, the last one, whereby I used uh, what, uh, two by eights, two by tens. Uh, this one needs to be 15, almost 16 feet long, this is the strong back. So, I'm going to build it somewhat like a ladder. My plan is to take two sheets or two strips of plywood that I've cut out. Lay another one sort of across the joint and then some shorter pieces on the ends and then tie it together with some 2x8s. So we know that the edge of the plywood is nice and straight, cut on the table saw, certainly using the factory edge so that I can get a very straight line. I was concerned that if I used, you know, 2x16 two by, two by or, or not 2 by uh, 2 by two by 10 by 16 feet long and it wasn't actually going to be all that straighter level. I'm hoping this will all be stiff enough once that it is assembled. So, I'm just going to measure up approximately four feet here. So that this long section here, which will butt over top of the joint, will come to approximately there. And all I'm going to be doing is putting in a lot of screws. I 
going to label this hand bow. And then we measure out, I'm going to put these uh, two by sixes exactly where every station will be. And that's because I'm going to need something to screw the cross ball cleat, which gets attached to the bottom of the forms. I mean, I could drive it into the end of the plywood, I suppose, but we we'll probably just blow it apart. So there's going to be a lot more uh, cross structure than plans call for. He's only suggesting maybe four spacers in between here, the structure, but uh, my concern is screwing down into the edge of the plywood. Gonna be a little bit heavier, but uh, be a little stronger. Before I go through the task of actually making sure that this uh, mass of strong back is level, uh, you know, across the uh, the strong back and from front to back or bow port to bow, um, I'm going to make sure that I determine exactly where the best location is. It's going to cause the least amount of disruption to the rest of the shop. I may need to get my vacuum uh, canister emptied, I'll need to get at the drawers. The little workbench is on wheels which is good and the kayak will be on wheels. So I think that uh, this location probably will work the best. So I've set up my laser which is uh, with the magnet actually just stuck to the garage door. So I'm just going to use 2 by 4s uh, a couple more here and there to lift up the middle if it's going to sag. Uh, move the you know uh, starboard or port side to uh, lift it a little bit here and there. I mean it's pretty level right now, um, but I'd like to make sure that it's pretty level down the center line, especially and across athwart ships because uh, you know the, the the forms are going to sit right across there, like right there. That's pretty level, but up here not so much. So this corner needs to be lifted just ever so slightly. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to put a leg in there. If there's already a leg there. I'm going to put another leg in and lift it a little bit and then take that leg off and reposition or whatever so that it's all going to be, you know, well supported under the weight of the boat. The laser lever hasn't moved. I've got this corner and right through this sort of homemade beam right through the other corner level. I've got my supports on there. That's really level. Through the center's level. I'm checking a whole bunch of different spots. That's pretty now. Probably could do a wedge under this corner here. second of an inch, I'm going to call it a day and be happy with this. Any minor adjustments I can do in the forms themselves by using the laser down the water lines so I can wedge up, you know, here and there. Prefer not to, but, uh, you know, with a slightly uneven floor and uh, 16 feet long, you know, I think this is about as acceptable as it's going to get. I'm ready to set the forms on the strong back. I just need a center line right down the center of the strong back and I've got my laser set up. I marked center of number eight and center of number one and then uh, with my laser attached to my metal garage door which works really well. 
So with the lights off, you can see it a heck of a lot better. Now I'm just gonna go along and mark all of the other station areas on the center. I suppose, you know, one could use a string line, it would work just as well, although, you know, over the course of a longer distance, moving and stretching a string line, you know, sometimes can be off by just a tad. I'm going to mark the very end there because that's where the stem will overhang. I think we're good on that. I'm just using my larger framing square here, or I guess you call it that more of a drywall square. My other one doesn't span distance. With the forms all in place, I leveled everything up, getting them uh, vertical, perpendicular. I then added some of these spacers inside here, as you see, to exactly span the distance between the forms themselves. That's going to lock everything vertical from end to end. With all the forms set up, I'm now working on fitting the keelson and marking it for bevels and the stems at both ends. But we're going to leave that till the next episode. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Do consider becoming a subscriber, give me a like, or share the video with someone you might be interested in watching. Thank you very much. See you next week.